Out of all the possible places in the United States, why did NASA decide to make Cape Canaveral, Florida the go-to location for rocket launches? Three, two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis. A final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest... Florida can have some pretty rough weather. It gets hit by at least 10 hurricanes per year. and it can have a lot of rain, humidity, and lightning. But Florida also has a lot going for it in terms of rocket launching potential. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how and why the Florida Space Coast became the place to launch these engineering marvels. In 1947, just before choosing this Florida location for launches, a V-2 ballistic rocket was launched from White Sands, New Mexico. But immediately after takeoff, the launch team knew that something was off. Well, let me tell you, everybody was surprised because it started going south instead of north and it was flying over Texas and ultimately landed near Juarez, Mexico, where it left a crater that was 50 feet in diameter and 24 feet deep. This dangerous launch gone haywire led the government to rethink their launching strategy and consider other safer places to launch from. Well, in the 1950s, Cape Canaveral was not heavily populated and it was already home to the Banana River Naval Air Station, which the government already owned. Plus, from this location, launching eastward is safe and it allows us to take advantage of Earth's natural rotational pull. This pull is a result of launching in the same direction that the Earth is spinning and of Florida's close proximity to the equator. Locations closer to the Earth's equator have to spin faster than those at the poles because these locations have to travel longer distances than the ones at the poles to accomplish one full rotation. This means that launching far from the equator requires more fuel or for your vehicle to weigh less, which could restrict your payload size. Although I do want to add that if a high inclination orbit is desired, the Cape is not the place to launch these rockets. Instead, at a place like Vandenberg Air Force Base in California would make more sense. All right, another pro of launching eastward of the Cape is that it is right on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. Meaning that in the case of an anomaly or an accident, a rocket would fall in the ocean and not over people. Well, this was great news for those engineers that worked on that project that went a little sideways out of New Mexico. Nowadays, we also take advantage of this location because rockets have multiple stages and we can plan controlled landings of those stages right into the ocean. So it became evident that Cape Canaveral was a site like no other. So on July 24, 1950, the Bumper V2 had its first successful launch from Cape Canaveral. Okay, now a question for you. Have you ever seen a rocket launch here in Florida? If you haven't, then add it to your bucket list. They are one of the greatest achievements in modern history. And honestly, seeing something so massive and powerful flying extremely fast into space has to be experienced in person. And I have to add, I don't know if it's because I'm a space nerd, but every time I see a rocket launch here in Florida, I look up and I instantly get goosebumps on my arms. And honestly, seeing what we can do as a society when we come together and as a science community is extremely impressive. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever seen a rocket launch and what you thought of this experience. With commercial spaceflight becoming more and more of a reality, the next few years are going to be some interesting times in space history. So make sure to keep an eye out for what's happening at the Space Coast. I want to thank you for watching and remind you to please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed learning with me today.